Welcome to Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Stars Daily Sports Podcast presented by Big O Tires. It's a bad weather Friday, January 17th. I can see icicles hanging from my car in the driveway. Hey, I'm your host, Blair Kirkhoff. There shouldn't be any precipitation on Sunday afternoon when the Chiefs meet the Tennessee Titans in the AFC Championship game. The forecast calls for cold weather, you know, maybe in the teens, but the Arrowhead grass is covered today. There shouldn't be any issues with the field on Sunday. On the podcast this week, you've heard from Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Taran Matthew, and other Chiefs players. You've heard from the group that covers the Chiefs for the star. Today, you're going to hear from three coaches who have everything to do with scheming the Chiefs game plan for Sunday. They're the coordinators. Dave Tobe handles the special teams. Steve Spagnolo is the defensive coordinator, and Eric Bieniemy is the offensive coordinator. I can't remember if we've had the top assistants on the podcast this season, but I figured the eve of the biggest game would be a good time to hear what they're thinking. Let me give you a little background on each. Tobe and Andy Reid go back quite a ways. They were on staffs together at Texas El Paso and Missouri under Bob Stoll. Tobe remained at Mizzou while Andy Reid started his NFL career, and Reid hired Tobe on his Philadelphia Eagles staff. Tobe went on to become the special teams coordinator for the Chicago Bears, where he coached one of the greatest return specialists of all time in Devin Hester. Reed and Tobe were reunited in Kansas City when Reed got the job here in 2013. Toward the end of the Tobe interview, you'll hear him say how much it would mean to him for Andy Reed to have the ultimate postseason success. After a break, you'll hear from Steve Spagnolo. Spags was hired soon after the Chiefs parted ways with Bob Sutton after last season. And although the Chiefs defense got off to a slow start this year, it's come on strong in the second half of the season. These Chiefs defenders face the unenviable task of confronting Titans running back Derrick Henry on Sunday, and you'll hear from Spags about that challenge. He also spends a good deal of time breaking down Chiefs safety and difference-making player Taran Matthew. Like Tobe, the enemy has been on Reed's Kansas City staff from the beginning, first as the running backs coach and now in his second season as the offensive coordinator. It was a bit of a surprise that the enemy didn't get a head coaching job this season. He interviewed for three, and being an offensive coordinator for Reed has been a launching pad for NFL head coaches. The enemy speaks to that topic and has plenty more to say about Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense. Okay, there's the setup. First, we'll hear from Dave Tobe. Do you remember the last game? Um, and Do I remember the last game? Oh, boy. Yeah, I remember the last game. But do you do anything different? gotten down your guys' rhythm and studied you right. guys, whatever. Knowing that and how successful he was making that play, do you do anything different facing this? Sure. Game? I mean, you go back and you look and see what happened. And uh, obviously we, we were giving away, you know, our, our cadence a little bit. And I needed to do a better job of noticing that he was doing it during the game because it was, it was he was definitely getting a great get off the whole game. Uh, didn't notice it. You know, and they, they, he made a huge play at the end of the game, and it, it worked out good for them. Uh, since then, we've addressed it and changed it up a little bit. Hey, what are you going back to that game and see what happened at the end? Yeah. Um, what does it say that you the Tennessee game? Yeah, you yeah. didn't necessarily have to talk to them about the issues on the last two minutes that it was Buck or, you know, James and this yeah. and discussing it themselves to sort of figure out the deep initiation of them to try to sort it out before having to come to the next meeting, the next film session with you before you guys move forward? Yeah, I mean, these guys are veterans. They, they understand, you know, exactly what happened. Uh, you know, you don't have to, you know, you're not going to sit there and yell and scream at them. You just, you just make the corrections and you move on. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a bad day. I thought, our, you know, like I said at the time, I thought our offense and defense did enough to win the game. We'd have to take care of our end of it, you know, and, and we would have been fine. So. Uh, we moved forward, and since then we've had a lot of games and uh, done done a pretty good job since then. We, we talk so much about offensive and defensive players having, you know, a little extra motivation or the possibility of redemption. It's rare that you get the sort of the same opportunities on special teams, or it's rarer, right? I guess I should say. Just what do you feel like you get from the guys understanding the opponent and obviously the chance? Just well, we know. I mean, they're a good football team, and it's going to come down to small plays. I mean, it's going to come down to special – just like last week. I mean, it was huge. Uh, so, you know, our guys know how important it is, and, and we're focused, and, and we're preparing, and, and we're ready. Dave, how would you describe just the emotional swing that you experienced last week? Whew. Yeah, I mean, it went from a nightmare to, you know, a great dream. I mean, really. Um, you know, the good thing was – and I was really proud of our guys. I mean, the way they bounced, the way they stuck together, and they uh, just – went about 
you know, going to the next play and moving on to the next play and, and making plays. They had one play and then they had another play and we ended up getting five big plays after that. You know, we had two bad ones and then five good ones. So, uh, you know, it was fortunate that it ended up, you know, the way it did. And, and I'm just so proud of our guys. It started, it started with McColl's kickoff. Yes, yeah, McColl's, McColl's kick, kickoff return kind of uh, sparked us, you know, got our team saying, hey, you know, we're okay. We're going to make plays, you know, and then I got our fans back into it and, then offense goes out in first play, I think, and score, and you know, and then we got the you know got the thing ro- uh, rolling, and then with the you know with the punt fake, you know, stopping that, and, and then the kickoff, getting the turnover there, that was huge, uh, you know. So uh, once, <laughs> I mean, I was in the locker room at halftime and saying it's 28-24, we're 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 leading this game, you know, it's all it's it's all there for us now. So and, you know, I'm just proud of our guys. No, I was, was going get to get, get you to speak to Dan's play. Yeah, Dan, Dan's play, that was one of the most unbelievable tackles I've ever seen, you know, on a special teams play. I mean, it was a solo tackle, out in space, um, hard tackle, angle tackle, and then he has to stop him short for, you know, basically a two-yard gain. And, you know, otherwise, you know, they get the first down. It was, a, you know, I thought it was a good call. I really did. Uh, you know, but, but Dan, you know, I, I think he's been waiting all year for that play. You know, he's, he, he zeroes in on that guy, and he's looking for that direct snap, and and here it came. So, you know, and he just was shot out of a cannon and, and, and didn't miss a beat and made a nice tackle in space. It looked like he knew that was coming. Well, he, he's looking for that. That's one of the things. That's his job. I and mean, he's, I think he said the same thing. I mean, he's, he's watching for it and, and he hopes it happens. I mean, that's his mentality, you know, and it happened and he, and he, and he went and made a play and, and it was huge for us in that moment. He's okay. Okay. Yes. Kind of Excuse me. Yes. He's, he's fell under the radar, but he had 108 plays in that game. I mean, he played every down on, on defense, and he played every down on special teams, and, and he's that important to us. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's a behind-the-scenes guy, but he is so, so important, you know, to our football team, and, and, and he will be in these next two games, too. The, the kick return obviously got you guys jump started. And their kicker, you had a lot of chances for returns because he couldn't kick it through the end zone. What's the, the weapon of Butker's leg? No returns for them. I mean, how big is that for you, especially this time of year when those plays can really swing down? That's a, that's a great point, and, and it's a huge factor for us that we were able to kick touchbacks when we want to kick touchbacks. Here, here's a prime example. I mean, it's 34-24 to 24 in that game. We have the, the uh, taunting penalty. We have to kick off from the 20. He kicks an 80-yard kick all the way down to the goal line, and we tackle him on a 25-yard line. I mean, that's Bucker in our coverage units. I mean, that was another big play in that game. I thought that kind of kind of went on. Uh, you know, unseen, untalked about, really. Well, the last one, Matt, there. Given how long you have worked with Andy and your friendship over the years, how important would it be to you to, to keep oh. the AFC Championship game and, and potentially win a Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean, I've thought about this a lot. You know, I mean, and, and Andy, Andy, nobody deserves it more than Andy. You know, and, and he's such a great coach. You know, to not have a Super Bowl win, you know, under his belt, I mean, this this would be this would be huge. I'd be, I mean, I don't know if I'd stop crying with him. I'd probably hug him forever. You know, I'm just so proud of you know what he's done and everything he's done, you know, in his career, and, and and he needs that. He needs this. He needs that. If your steering wheel has more traction than your actual tires, that's a big O no. Thankfully, for all your car's big O nos, there's always a big O yes. Now through February 2nd, buy three get one free on select sets of four Aspen Touring AS or Mesa AP2 brand tires with paid installation purchase. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Disposal fees extra and up to 10% shop fee based on non-discounted regular retail price not to exceed $35 were permitted. See store for pricing. Eligibility may vary. Not valid with other offers. At participating locations, no cash value. Uh, I'm not going to take long. It's, it's great to be here in front of you all in this particular week and to still be working into mid-January. And with that, I'll open it up. What's this week like you've been involved in? title game and stuff. What's, what's this week like being one step away? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I was just thinking about that and until I looked at one of these is in the back room there that has all the back with the AFC Championship and all that. And I'll be honest with you, and maybe I'm different this way. Uh, it, to me, it's another game. I know that sounds really strange, but, you know, you get in the walls of the facility we're in and you kind of get in the grind and get right back into the same routine, which Coach Reed is really good at, putting everybody right back in the same routine. I don't know that I feel it right now. I'm not saying I won't feel it as the week goes on, but trying to make it as much as we can, uh, just another game and a sequence of however many we're going to play here. Steve, how do you, feel about your first, how do you feel about your first full game without uh, 
Yeah, uh, t tried not to think about it very much. I, I tell you what can happen, um, and even some of the assistant coaches help me with this. Sometimes when that happens and you lose somebody on the back end, you start to change things and you, you, you call the game a little bit differently. And, you know, I know, I think Dave Merritt even said it in the course of the game. Look, don't, you know, he, he, Dave's great that way. Um, don't let you change, don't, don't let who's in there change what you're calling, just go with it. You know, it's good to have assistants like that that say have confidence in the guys we're putting out there. And I think that helped. Uh, so I didn't feel that we called it like we normally did. We miss him. Uh, I think the surgery went well and he's doing good. Love, can't wait to get him back. Steve, you know? how would you describe sort of where you and Tyron are in terms of being on the second page? He, he's spoken about that before. Yeah. The sense of each other. And, and with that, I do wonder if you see a, a correlation between Tyron's role in the room and with the defense, particularly in, in Patrick's role in, in the room in terms of leadership. Yeah, uh, I don't know Patrick well enough. I mean, from what I see from afar, I mean, he looks to me like the ultimate leader, and we know what he's like as an athlete and the way he is on game day. I see some of the same qualities, obviously, in Tyron. Um, I'm sure glad he's here. It makes my job a lot easier uh, when you can rely on somebody like that. And there have been a number of times during the year where I've sat in my office and said, you know, I need to convey some message to these guys somehow, some way. And ultimately what I normally do is I go to him and say, hey, look, can you steer them a little bit this way? And then it, usually it's, I got a coach and we roll. So it's, it's good to have that. And in yeah. game action, do you feel like you know kind of by now what, what, what Tyron's thinking, what he's doing, and, and how he sort of represents? I'm not sure I ever know what he's thinking because he, <laughs> he's out there just balling up. Um, no, he's great on the sideline. Uh, listen, the game's emotional, so we can all get a little bit emotional. Sometimes he's calming me down. Sometimes I'm calming him down. Um, but he... I think the other guys really feed off him. And so when you have that in a player, a guy they respect, they know at some point he's going to help make a play to win the game. I think that, that bodes well for us. Coach, something Tyron's preached all season long is his championship swagger. How would you define that, though? From your I don't know if I got a definition for that. Uh, I just got my, my own. I don't even know what a swagger is, to be honest with you. Uh, but they have it. Uh, they, they, you know, I mean, he has it. You know, most of them do. Look, to me, it's, it's a confidence thing, right? I mean, you can't play this game or be successful in this particular game unless you're a confident player. You got to believe in yourself, right? You got to be secure in yourself. And I don't know if that's his definition, uh, but that's what I can see. Any yeah. Any yeah. Yeah, he's in, important to us. He's important to Dave Tobe uh, and what he does. He made some terrific plays last week that changed the, the flow of the game. He is as steady uh, of a player that I've ever been around. I mean, every day he comes in, he works at it. He's the first guy out on the field. Uh, I don't know if you're all out there when we go out for practice, but always the first guy out, never misses. He loves what he does, and he's uh, prof professional in everything that he does. I'm glad we got him. What's the most important thing that you're telling your players about Derrick Henry in, in Sunday's game, making sure that they not only wrap up on the pass, yeah. but, but also some of the middle things like don't line up in the, you know, in the, neutral, you know, in the neutral zone? Yeah, well, all the, the mental things, it wouldn't matter who you're playing. Uh, you don't want to give anybody an extra five yards because you went offside or did something that you're not supposed to do. Look, he's a huge challenge. Um, I can spit out all the tackling terms. I mean, our guys know what they are. It's going to be a mindset, and it's going to take all 11. It's not going to be one guy tackling. It's a swarm. Get, overpopulate the ball. Uh, he, we know he's going to get the ball a lot, so get a lot of get a lot of people there. Did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to say everybody in your position wants to play an opponent and force him to be one-dimensional. Yeah, they kind of come in that way, relying on good point. seventy percent of their yards. How do they get away with that? What makes this guy so good as a runner and their offensive line so effective? that they can play that way. Yeah, you know, you just hit something that, look, we, we talk a lot about the back because he's got the ball, he's getting all the odds, and he's credited with them. But that offensive line, you talk about playing as a unit, they remind me a little bit of the old line that we had in 07 with the Giants. And I don't know if you remember that Super Bowl we were in. They ran that ball for, like, the first eight minutes or something. And it was the old line and a bunch of backs. And that's what this football team does. And somehow, some way, we got to find a way to get them to third down and then win third down because if we don't do that we can't get the ball back to Patrick Mahomes and Coach Reed so that's going to be the challenge that we're going to have. With that, I don't know Sam, we'll do last one Sam and then we'll give him here. Steve, uh, 
How much freedom do you give Tyron as far as like what he does before the snap to fake a blitz and what he does even after the snap to yeah. break off his? Well, there, there's a well, there's a little bit of it coordinated. Um, we have calls, but. Uh, listen, I give him free reign because he feels the game. There are some things, you know, it's the typical. There are some things during the game. It's like, um, what is he doing? Oh, great job. You know, because he's not doing exactly the way you drew it up, and yet he has a feel and a keen instinct. And look, you got to let these guys play. He is an instinctive player. I'd never want to pull that away from him. So we let him go. Hey, it's Blair. Hey, we have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners. Unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Stars award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns we have to offer. And it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. For your convenience, your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50, unless you tell us to cancel. A lot of subscription services won't tell you that. They'll just sneak it on there. We just told you. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. Hey, let's let's go. Let's roll. Coach, the nation uh, saw you calling plays uh, Sunday in person with everybody. Listen, we have a, an operation and, and uh, how we do things, and we have a communication system. I mean, coach is communicating to me. I'm communicating to the quarterback. Uh, to be honest with you, I think people are making something out of nothing. At the end of the day, the only thing that we want to do is chop wood and continue finding ways to get ourselves to – to that, that game that's taking place in Miami. That's what this is all about. There were some early drops last year. What change do you think on the sideline? Well, one thing, and I've said this to you guys before, I'm very proud of the way our guys have rallied through adverse situations. I'm very proud of how we've handled things through tough times. In life, everything is not perfect, okay? Things happen. The only thing that you're going to be measured on is how you handle it. And one thing I kept talking to the guys about, just remain poised, okay? You never want to spot a team by 24 points. You never, ever want to do that. But one thing that I, I commend our guys is that we did remain poised. One thing that we talked about, and I know you guys heard Pat talk about it, and we talk about this every single day. Just play one play at a time. Okay, focus for that one particular play. Why? That play is by far the most important play. Then when it's all said and done, we'll line up and do it again. And we're going to put all our focus, our effort, and energy into that play. That's what it's about. And those guys play one play at a time. And the results end up showing. Coach, how many Titans are a team that uh, like to pound the ball with Derek Henry? What, what, how important is it to, for you guys to get a breath on uh, it's it's very important. It's important for us to make sure that we're maximizing the opportunities that are presented to us offensively. Because yes, I mean Derrick Henry is a force. He's a great kid. He's a great human being. I had a an opportunity to spend some time with him at the combine when he came out, and I was very impressed with the person. Being a former running back and a former running back coach. It goes without saying, I'm, <laughs> I'm a fan of the kid. The kid does a hell of a job. Now, this weekend, I'm not going to be a fan, you know. <laughs> but it is important for us to take care of business on our side of the ball. It is important for us to execute with great attention to details. And it is important for us to put points on the board to apply pressure to them. For all of Andy's accomplishments, you know, the knock against him has always been one of the championship games and, and getting that Super Bowl ring. As someone who's known him a long time, is that unfair criticism, and what makes you think that he's a different coach now that can handle that differently? Well, and I'll say this. Um, for Coach to be in as many championship games that he's been in, and maybe he hasn't quite got over the hurdle yet, I say it's still a huge accomplishment because he's still one of the best in the business. But when it's all said and done, when you take each year, you know, as they present itself. The only thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is that we complete this season the way that we want to complete it. And 
for coach, he's just excited. He's energized. He just wants to make, make sure that collectively as a staff and as a team that we maximize the opportunity that's being presented to us. We know how close that we came last year, you know, but this time we want to maximize it and get over that hurdle. Steve told said he would cry in the past. How will you Hey, I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that one. <laughs> but uh, in the bad way or in the good way we're talking? In the good way. You know what? I, I'll just sit there and enjoy the moment because they only come so many times. The last time I went to a Super Bowl was with the San Diego Chargers, okay, in the 1994 season. So you don't get these opportunities all the time. And so this will be my fourth uh, championship game that I partake in, whether being a player or third, third excuse, or fourth, yes, that I've uh, taken place in as a coach and as a player. And these opportunities don't come very often. So the last time I've been to the Super Bowl was 1994. So it's been a long time. So it's up to us to make sure that we find a way to get over the hurdle. A couple more cup difference. Is this offense that the last time you guys lost a game, which was to Tennessee, do you feel mentally and on a mature level or, or just the way guys are approaching this point in the season? Do you guys are different from the last time? Well, more than any, it is about our approach. It is about our attitude. It's, I always talk to the guys about how they come in the building. Make sure you have a plan. It's about making sure that our approach, our attitude, and our determined mindset is focused on the goal. All right? And the goal is winning the Super Bowl, but there's a lot of things that needs to take place prior to. Well, today our focus and our attitude and our approach is about situational football and how we handle today's practice. And so I think from that point on, our guys have just decided to focus on what's important, all right? Just how we talk about one play at a time, it's one day at a time, okay? How we take care of uh, meetings, how we handle ourselves in the, the weight room, the training room, you know, what are we doing at night, taking care of our bodies? All of those little things matter because if you want to be the best, there's some things that you got to give up. There's some things that you got to be willing to pay a price for. And I think more than anything, collectively as a group, our guys are growing in that direction. Coach, I know it's probably hard to be similar to that. It's probably hard to make a comparison. But this group last year, going through it for the first time, if you got a sense throughout this week, for the guys that were here last year that they're just more ready for this moment or there's the way that they handle you know, all the extra stuff that they're more prepared and locked in on the game as opposed to all the other stuff that comes along with the championship game? Well, I, I think the experience of going through it last year has, has helped tremendously. We're a year older. We've been there before. But at the end of the day, we want to find a way to, as I've said to you guys before, to drag ourselves across the finish line together. So collectively, we're going to do it together. We're going to work our tails off today. And you know what? We get everything done that needs to be done. We'll find a way to get through Friday. But the only thing that matters is what we have at task today. And that's to make sure when we go in that practice field that we handle ourselves the right way. And then we handle ourselves the right way in the meeting room after that. That'll do it for another week of Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Stars Daily Sports Podcast presented by Big O Tires. Thanks to Derek Donovan and Randy Mason for producing today's episode and to Rich Sugg for providing the sound from the news conferences. Links to Chiefs coverage can be found in the show notes on KansasCity.com in the Red Zone Extra app. Be sure to pick up a copy of Sunday's Kansas City Star. Huge special section on the AFC Championship game. Hey, when we talk to you again on Monday, we'll know the Super Bowl matchup and we'll either be breaking down the next opponent or looking ahead to next season. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you then.